Imagine a sandbox game combined with realistic physics and machine parts. Now what do you get? Gamecraft. But a good sandbox game isn't complete without the ultimate creativity outlet, mods. Take the VR rhythm game Beat Saber, for example. In Beat Saber, mods give players the ability to change sabers, songs, environments, and more. Now imagine that sort of modding, but in Gamecraft. Wow, your imagination is way too literal. Anyway, the goal is to have the ability to add anything into Gamecraft through modding. It's not easy though, which is why Xmods was created. Xmods is a group started by Ingenious, that's me, to provide infrastructure and other help for developing and maintaining Gamecraft mods. The name comes from Robocraft X mods, in case you're curious. I also happen to be an X mod for Robocraft, which is a happy coincidence. But this video isn't about random anecdotes from my past, so let's get on with it. Modding work started months before Gamecraft was even a twinkle in a developer's eye. In fact, Free Jam was still working on Robocraft and Card Life back then. Modding interest was sparked by Card Life's simplistic JSON value modding abilities. It was worked on by a few enthusiastic community members, which briefly included me. Unfortunately, Card Life development stopped in June, and modding work slowed down along with that announcement. There is still ongoing work though. Current modding efforts with Card Life focus more on filling in where the devs fell short, more than expanding Card Life past what the devs have planned for it, for obvious reasons. Most of the modders, myself included, have abandoned the game, but shout out to Zhang for his continued dedication to Card Life. The only good thing to come from Free Jam after their announcement about seizing development on all of their public games was Robocraft X, or as it's now known, Gamecraft. Some fans of Robocraft and Card Life naturally migrated to that game's community. Gamecraft's first version, named Experiment 1, was released soon after the announcement. Modding interest wasn't immediately created out of thin air though, that would take a couple of months. Up until the fourth update, the only modding was changing a few values to bypass artificial limitations in-game. Gamecraft's fourth experiment stirred up modding interest, especially for me. The fourth update's most notable addition was game saves, which allowed players to save, copy, and share as many of their creations as they wanted. Unfortunately, the update didn't include a way of creating multiple saves. So I created Robocraft X Save Manager, or Rexism for short, to manage saves. Rexism gets the claim to fame as the first external mod for Gamecraft. The update history of Rexism is available on the GitHub page linked below, but here's the short and sweet version. The initial release of Rexism wasn't much to look at, with a beautiful command line interface and only basic multi-save management. A couple of days later, an update landed which added a graphical user interface. Rexism grew quite steadily after that. Since inception, Rexism has added, in order, thumbnails, game mode switching, a thumbnail picker, a startup menu, save importing and exporting, better save ID handling, a settings menu, save version control, an about window, save metadata, error tolerance, button icons, and auto updating. Rexism development never stops, but I don't want to suffocate, so I will. Before Rexism v003 was released, Xmod's infrastructure was set up to help Rexism's development. Shortly after the Xmod's code repository was set up, work was started on RC Edit. It was supposed to be a lot like MC Edit, but for Robocraft X. It was another external mod, but it actually reused code from Robocraft X. Unfortunately, it was too hard to get to work, so it was abandoned in favor of more focus on Rexism. Mod work came to a halt when University started back up for me, since there wasn't a lot of help on the Gamecraft modding scene. Rexism development continued, but at a slower pace. Gamecraft also released an update which filled part of the void Rexism was filling. The Gamecraft update didn't offer all of the functionality Rexism did, which further reinforced Rexism's reason to exist, but didn't provide any extra reason to update it. Luckily, University isn't an uninterrupted slog. A week-long interruption provided time to look into a powerful Unity injector called the Illusion Plugin Architecture. IPA is a tool to allow anyone to customize games with their own code. For Gamecraft, it allowed for a test mod to be created and to serve as a proof of concept for the future. Speaking of the future, Gamecraft modding has come a long way, but there's still a long road to travel before it's complete. Real internal modding is still in its infancy, and definitely hasn't got anything on Beat Saber's modding community quite yet. My big goal for Xmods is to get it to a level where the Gamecraft modding community could be used as an example in a video like this. I have a few technical goals for the Gamecraft modding scene as well. Most importantly, some real mods need to be created. For a start, I'd like to create some new commands to use in-game. I'd also like to understand the file format for gamesave.gc files, and maybe even get back to work on RC Edit. But more immediately, I'd like to add and document Harmony to extend the potential of mods. This video is hopefully the first in a series of many to show the progress on Gamecraft modding. Next time I'll discuss the first internal mods in more detail. All the modding projects discussed are open source. 
I've put all the information below, including Xmod's Discord server and code website to check out.